In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is and shall be. Did we feel an earthquake on Thursday morning? You know, whenever our souls are come to the holy font, and whenever we find deep repentance, Hades really shakes and quivers because it loses a soul. Because that soul now is gone to Christ. As it says, as many as have put on Christ, have put on Christ. So on Thursday morning when we baptized those beautiful children, Kathleen and Lucas, the church was filled with joy as Hades was now losing two souls. Just like when we come to confession, because when we come to confession, our baptismal garment is cleaned and washed. Do you remember when you were a kid, or maybe you still do this, and you used to mix sodas together? Has anyone ever done that before? Like you put like Dr. Pepper and then Sprite and an orange soda and you try to get all the weird colors and then you end up drinking it and it's just the worst, you know? You think it's going to be really good, but it's, it's just not. <laughs> I used to do that all the time. They would drive my parents to the wall. I'd get an orange soda, and I love Dr. Pepper and root beer. <clears throat> so, you know, we mix the sodas up together, expecting all these cool, cool experiments. But you find out that it's actually really not so cool, and it ends up becoming a waste. This is the very thing that we do when we mingle and we mix our faith with something else. And I think because we live in a society that doesn't understand spirituality, or at least they think they do, we end up accidentally, sometimes accidentally, and sometimes without even knowing it, sometimes knowing it, mixing our faith with the world. Orthodoxy means pureness, untainted, genuine. Bonafide, if you want to use that term. It's bonafide. <laughs> but why do we want to make it something that it's not? I think for a lot of us, we have a generations of inculturalization where we have become secretly Protestant, where we think that the worship of God only belongs on Sunday. And so then we try to pack everything on Sunday and then we end up being exhausted and then you know, Monday rolls around and we're like, all right, God, I, you know, I guess I'm here. We've lost the full depthness of our spirituality and the fullness of our genuine faith. You know, in the gospel at Orthros, in the gospel at Orthros, when the altar is declaring, this is why you don't see the priest, the altar is declaring the gospel because it represents the tomb. And in the gospel, it's according to Luke's gospel for today, and it said in Orthros, Cleopas and all the other disciples didn't know who Christ was until he broke bread, which is symbolizing Holy Communion. They take it, and then they're able to see him clearly, and then he vanishes from their sight. And then they go, and now we know him. Meaning that Christ now entered into the disciples at Holy Communion. They're blind on the road to Emmaus, and now they see clearly. I'm waiting for someone to start singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> and then in the gospel today, Christ is, is warning us to love all, and to be compassionate, and to be real, and to be authentic, so that way we do not mix our faith with something that is tainted. What do I mean by this? You know, I really love fall, but I really despise Halloween. Why is it that we call ourselves Christians, but yet we love to decorate our homes in a very demonic spirit? 
in a very demonic spirit, and we think that we're not inviting them into our home. Today we celebrate two great saints that I, I learned to love a couple of years ago. I, I found out about them as you do about friends, right? That's exactly what the saints are. You meet new friends, and then you immediately just, there's a connection. Today we celebrate St. Cyprian and St. Justina. And St. Cyprian was known as being a magician. I mean, he literally would cast spells. He was known for divinization. He would think that he could use demonic powers to heal people. And so people would come to him, and he would say, okay, let me cast a magic spell for you. And then, poof, the demons would go work for him. And so he had this ridiculous idea that he actually had power. And then so one day, one of his friends wanted the virgin, the virgin, St. Justina. And so he would send countless demons to her to tempt her and to allure her, and she resisted it all. What do we say at the end of the day, our Father? And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. I mean, she was living that. She was living that until finally St. Cyprian sent actually the devil himself to her. And so with humility and great pain, she was able even to cast the devil away from her, right, to the power of the life-giving cross. And so the devil then appears to St. Cyprian, and as the devil is, very angry and jealous, he said, because I could not say, take St. Justina, I will now take you. And he said, well, what magic did she use that I don't have? And he said, that evil cross. This is how the devil speaks about us and about the church. It's why we don't make friends with the world. Because the ruler of the world is the devil. And so St. Cyprian, who knew exactly what that was, as the devil was about to take him, he makes the sign of the cross and the devil leaves because he cannot stand before it. And so St. Cyprian found this new power and immediately sought the Christians, was baptized, and then later on became a priest and then a bishop and then was martyred for his faith, so much so that the other pagans, his pagan buddies, actually murdered him and martyred him. It's really an incredible, an incredible story about saints who have rejected the world and the paganism that exists in this world. But see, the thing is that when St. Cyprian and St. Justina, when they found their faith, they held on to it. They held on to it and they didn't let it go, even unto death, even unto the sword. How many of us have rejected Christ just this morning? Isn't it interesting, as soon as something goes wrong, we always blame God? You know that's a kind of, that's a type of blasphemy? Which is an utter rejection? And aren't we going to partake of his most precious body and blood? Where the Holy Spirit is descending upon us? I mean, everywhere. I mean, not just the altar. I mean, all of us. The walls, the whole, the whole land of our church, the Holy Spirit descends upon it. So is our faith pure? I mean, our faith is pure, but are we pure in our faith? I guess I should ask it. Because Christ is warning us, don't you know that sinners lend to sinners? So why do you only love those whom you love? You know, it's really easy to get along with people who you like. But it's really hard, at least we think it is, to love those who we cannot stand. And so we're living in this time now where paganism is really alive. And we need to understand that the times that we're living in are the very same times that St. Cyprian and St. Justina are living in. What they saw in ancient Rome is what we are seeing now in our society and our culture. And we must protect ourselves from the culture of this world. Halloween is not a festival, dear ones in Christ, that we should, that we think it's innocent. Maybe 30 years ago. Maybe 30 years ago it was innocent. But doesn't innocence sometimes always tweet worldly? Worldly innocence, I mean. Because if you ever look at the ideologies in the world, right, the isms, you know what I like to call them, the isms. The isms in our world, whatever they are, whether it's socialism, feminism, 
racism, whatever it is, all the isms, liberalism, progressivism, capitalism, don't you ever notice that they tweak the gospel? And so then as soon as you begin to hear them, you think, oh, this, this is true. This is true. Yes, absolutely. Christ believes in this. I know he does. As if Christ is held by some box named a boundary of an ideology created by man. Sinful man. But why is it that we know the isms of the world, or many of us are fervent believers of some sort of ideology out there that we don't even know the gospel? And then as soon as we hear the gospel, we get quickly offended. We say, this isn't the gospel that I know. This can't be it. The Christ I know wants me to be good. So just be a good boy. Just do good things, right? Moralism. Or, you know, we just need to rebaptize our culture and just, you know, make it where everyone's equal. It's socialism. I mean, so it takes the gospel and it tweaks it and twists it. And you have to understand that the people that come up with these ideologies whisper and listen to the ideologies of the devil. There's, you know, two ways about this. Why is it that the ancient pagan religions are now back up and running? Did you know that the worship of Thor is like a real thing now? Like people are making like temples of Thor, like it's it's insane. Do we know that? <clears throat> In fact, one of our parishioners was telling me that one of their good friends is marrying somebody who's a Thor believer. I mean, Lord of mercy. I mean, these are what our spiritual ancestors, what they died to. You know, socialism isn't new comes from the ancient world. So we have this Sunday where we have two incredible martyrs, St. Justina and St. Cyprian, with this epistle and this gospel today that is telling us to keep our, our faith pure. You know, when the woman came to Christ during the Passion Week and she breaks the alabaster flask, it's known as pure nard or sometimes spike nard, in the gospel translation. Spike nard literally just means pure nard, pure oil. And she breaks it and then she anoints, his, anoints Christ's head. This is in Mark's gospel. John's gospel, we know that in Luke's gospel, it's at Christ's feet. In fact, some of the fathers say it's actually multiple women who are actually anointing Christ before he goes off to his passion and death. And the pure nard and the flask breaking represents all the prophecies that have been fulfilled and completed. And now the fragrance of that nard is up into the air and going into the world. I mean, you ever like broken anything like perfume? Or spray put too much on? Cologne? You know, my, my, my men in here? It's like too much brew, you know, come down. But the fragrance of pure nard, when it goes into the air, whether our noses are clogged or not, we smell that fragrance. And that's exactly the gospel. Because as soon as the gospel is preached throughout the world, people are attracted to it. We look at the great missionaries like St. Nicholas in Japan. You know, St. Nicholas in Japan, he spent 10 years. He spent 10 years preaching the gospel to the Japanese and didn't baptize a single soul. Until finally he was told to go back to Russia. And he said, okay. One soul came to him and said, tell me about Christ. By the time that St. Nicholas of Japan died, he had a handful of bishops, hundreds of priests, and thousands of faithful. Now Japan, when you go see the beautiful Orthodox there, they're vibrant and on fire for Christ. But why is it here that we're really just slow to move? Why is it that when we hear the gospel, we're so offended and then we just leave? Why is it that the gospel is not integrated in everything that we do? Listen, dear ones in Christ, if you want the pagans to weep and mourn and actually become Christians, then you have to start being thankful for everything that you do. And that's why people are running to paganism, because they see the spirituality of paganism. That's why people love Halloween, because their life is not spiritual at all. So therefore, they want to decorate, decorate themselves, decorate their homes, and they think that's spirituality. Ha! 
I'm talking to the ghouls. But you know who the ghouls are? But yet, we don't do that. Christ says, don't paint your face. Don't show that you're fasting. Give thanks to the Father of lights. And so we have to find the spirituality that has been placed in your heart since the day you were baptized. Because if you reject that spirituality that has been given to you, and has been given to you from the last 2,000 generations, then why are we Orthodox Christians, and why are we here, and what's the point of having this place? We have a goal, dear ones in Christ, and that's to go to all nations and baptizing them all, and teaching them all that I have commanded to you. But yet, if you don't know the commandments of Christ, then we're kind of useless servants standing around with a pitcher of water saying, all right, who needs to be served? And then we end up serving ourselves. We end up serving ourselves, and that's when the anxiety hits. That's when the loneliness and bitterness hits, and that's when we, we look to everything else. I mean, it's so fascinating to me when I hear young men and women who say, yeah, Father, I do yoga and the Jesus prayer. But don't you know that when you do those moves, that you're literally worshiping the Hindu gods? Or that we dress up like witches and, and wizards? Don't you understand that you're practicing and playing with fire? Or when you go to Ouija boards? I mean, I've had Orthodox Christians tell me, yeah, Father, I use the Ouija board to speak to God. Good grief, who do you think you are? I wonder why we're lost, lonely, and that we feel distant from Christ. But yet Christ is calling back to us here. He says, love and be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. You know, all those who worship those isms, those ideologies of the world, do you know there's a place in this church for every single one of them? Do you know there's a place for every single one of us who desire to have Christ at the banquet? Doesn't he say this? Go out to the highways, the hedges, find all those who wish to honor me and love me. And we thought we were going to hear good things today. What else do we want to hear? We're called to preach the gospel. And we're called to love God because the evilness of the world, if you're not watchful and if you're not vigilant, will come into your heart and you'll become something that you're not. Meaning you reject your baptism. Meaning you're no longer the likeness of God. Not the image. You're always in the image of God. But you lose your likeness. This is why sin, there's never a reason why we should fall into sin. Sin is never a legitimate choice for the Christian. We reject all things and reject the worldly, and then we take it and we baptize it the Orthodox way. So dear ones, as you're <clears throat> journeying this month, as it gets colder, and as the world is enticing you to celebrate a pagan holiday, I really want to encourage you to find the spirituality of holy orthodoxy. Of uh, praying the name of Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Where you let his holy and most sweet name enter into your heart. So that way, by doing that, you'll become merciful as our Father in heaven is merciful. Do not taint your faith what has been given to you. Do not fall into laziness. Don't be Sunday only Christians. <laughs> There's no such thing as a Sunday only Christian. I mean, you're an everyday 24 7, 365 until the day that you give up your breath. And God willing, it's the next one. May our Lord help us to have a pure faith, and may he remember us in his heavenly kingdom.